Here is a brief review of Open Source Ecology Micro Tractor, which is a 16 to 32 horsepower micro-sized tractor with tracks and a loader bucket and a quick attach. Uh, what you see here is we've got quick attach implemented well. I'd like to discuss what has been built and what hasn't. In this version here, we've got two power cubes. One is a small power cube in the back. The second power cube has not been implemented yet. What we have instead is the driver platform where the driver s stands on top of this. So let's remove the power cube, which adds to 32 horsepower. That's not there yet. Uh, the main changes through the build were that uh, what happens here, let's point to some details. The frame, it turned out that the hydraulic motors, which are right there where the cursor is pointing, uh, they were wider than in a CAD because of an accurate CAD. We didn't have the, the actual file. And therefore, what we had to do in order to fit the motors while keeping 42-inch machine width, which is the current width, we had to move the arms inwards. So we had to cut them with a torch at this joint and move them in about two inches so that the motor would actually fit while keeping a 42-inch machine width. That's a major change and that needs to be resolved by uh, either... How do we resolve that? We need to mount the motors or use different motors or somehow... Well, actually, no, we do have an option. The way we mounted the, the drive sprocket we can push the drive sprocket in on the on the shaft and still retain the 42 inch machine width while allowing the motors to be like here and allowing the arms the arms that hold uh, this is called here the tensioner uh, this, the part here this is the actual tensioner you screw down this bolt here in order to tension the tracks and the whole thing and the whole tr uh, assembly of the motors moves up so the tracks are tensioned so that's the tensioning there but we can retain this the position of the vertical arms if we remount the idler accordingly that's the first major change and the actual as built configuration uh, there was a few little changes so let's take a look at the actual arm geometry we ended up for these cylinders here the curl cylinders they were not mounted here. They had to be mounted up a little bit because of the length of the cylinders. That geometry didn't work out. An accurate CAD one, one more time. Or I think the idea, the issue there was we didn't have accurate CAD for the actual cylinders. So we had to actually move them up uh, in order to make the curl of the bucket. Actually, the, the bigger issue was the curl. The curl was only going down maybe like 30 degrees or so. So by remounting the the arms up, uh, sorry, the remounting the curl cylinder up, we were able to get more like a 60 degree uh, dump of the bucket while fully extended in the upper position for the arms. So when you extend the arms up, we now get 60 degree dump by remounting that. But that has to be reworked since we don't want to have this additional piece sticking up. We want to basically raise the arms higher, uh, just simply higher, so that uh, the mounting point for the cylinder is included in the main arms. And here we have a closure of the top top arms here. We didn't actually use that, that's left open. And then uh, the cylinder mounting uh, was modified slightly, as you can see in the uh, pictures of the as-built uh, in the documentation. Otherwise, the tracks and the track geometry worked really well. The idlers and tracks work. The traction is good. There is an issue on a torque of the of the hydraulic motors, which currently we have about, according to calculations, we've got 2,500 pounds of pushing torque using the drive sprocket size that we see here. And right now, it's a little bit difficult for the machine to turn. Um, so what we want to do is either increase the system pressure or decrease the size of this drive sprocket or change it to a different hydraulic motor that has more torque. But the turning is a little bit limited right now with all the weight of the bucket, especially if you've got soil in the bucket or a load that you're carrying. It's not that easy to turn. And you can see the video for how, how it turns. It's reasonable, but it's not, not really acceptable for high performance. As far as the mounting, bottom mounting of the hydraulic cylinder here. In the CAD we have this cross shaft. We did not end up using that. We ended up mounting using a different mount system. 
uh, by extending these uh, these blocks here and making a custom mount for that one on each side uh, so that mounting is a little different otherwise the power cube is largely the same the issue one big issue is that we cannot run the cooler fan so the machine overheats up after about an hour or so of run because it turns out this type of engine that we're using does not have sufficient current charging to run a fan a cooling fan we're using the cooling fan to heat the hydraulic system that's a hydraulic cooler under the fan there if you look at the fan what more to say about this the the clamps here this mechanism here allows you to mount um, so these clamps both of these allow you to mount the the main shaft without using any keyways this is just a clamp on clamp made of half inch three inch inner diameter pipe drawn over mandrel tubing with welded on arms uh, little uh, wings like that but that works well to hold this in place what we actually ended up doing is using um, a clamp on the outside and another one on the inside because nothing prevents these arms here from moving inwards here so we actually put in another interior clamp here so that the arms would not shift in so they're fixed well and everything works right now the machine is driven by pull start the pull the pull cord is on the right hand side here so uh, actually it's on the it's on the left hand side here so you pull it from the front we intentionally eliminated a, a, a start a starter motor so we don't have to use a battery in the system but once again we are in trouble because we don't have enough charging power so we get a revisit the mounting of the hydraulic cooler so we can use passive cooling from the engine the air intake for the cooling of the hydraulic uh, hydraulic system there's little bits of details about how so here you see the hydraulic fittings and a hydraulic motor the way we have them right now is they're a little uh, hard to reach like when you actually do the all the fittings here it's close to the tracks close to the wheel so so hose routing there is a little tricky and we can simplify that so that'll be good future work the tension mechanism we like it right now right now we have uh, by turning this this bolt here you tension that's a one inch bolt here uh, by turning that bolt you tension this entire system uh, this entire assembly here outlined moves up tensioning the tracks and that's a nice mechanism avoiding any kind of complexity on a drivetrain here where these are just fixed idler wheels about the fixed idler wheels they are clamped together so once again no keyways super simple mounting just a mount plate with a hole and these clamps with three quarter inch bolts six of them shown here um, that hold the shafts uh, in place the idlers themselves are big three inch bearings one on each side so they're on both sides the shaft goes through them and just a welded uh, metal cylinder a 10 inch cylinder that we're using with round plates around that so very simple to make idler and that works very well uh, no issues with that over time we want to address abrasion issues none of this is hardened steel the the tracks here uh, they may get worn out because this is metal on metal contact so that might be something to improve in future iterations but for now it works uh, the tooth bar works it's re removable here it's not shown in detail but the tooth bar is a separate bar that's clamped on with uh, I think three bolts or so what else is notable here the hydraulic reservoir is here easy filling one thing I'd like to see for tensioning and service tensioning of the tracks you have to turn this bolt here that means you gotta get a wrench around that and that takes time it would be much more convenient if that if the bolt for used for tensioning would be up on top here so that you can take an impact driver or a regular wrench that you can turn turn r rapidly by hand 
Here, uh, a ratcheting wrench would work well, but if you have this piece of shaft sticking out, it would have to be a deep socket, so it's not easy to access, especially if there's a driver platform or another power cube in, in the back here. This would become literally impossible to get to if you have the second power cube on, so that uh, tensioning the tracks would require taking off the second small power cube. Therefore, if we put that tensioning bolt up on top here, that would allow for access much more easily without taking off the second power cube. But that would mean drilling through the whole three inch shaft, which is a heavy drilling operation, which requires a heavy duty drill of some sort. So that's definitely a, an extra piece of fabrication that needs to happen. Other than that, very satisfactory results. We call this about 95% done. It works well. Uh, pending just a little bit of the torque increase on the on the drive system and then then you can have a very functional high high performance chain already this thing is I mean it's pretty heavy duty it weighs about 2,000 pounds or so and can do some good work we've been field driving it field testing it uh, with satisfactory results and then pending a few of these refinements we can take this to product release and and avail this for sale and for for production, for training other entrepreneurs to build these in different locations around the world. Now, if you're interested in our immersion training, we just started in 2018, our first ever immersion training for OSE Fellows. So we're offering the first ever OSE Fellowship where you can learn to build